Alrighty guys, I'm Worth Dono. We are back for Boruto episode 88. Uh, Alright, so first order of business, just to get out of the way real fast. I am wearing the beanie, not because I am sick or anything, don't worry. I know like the, the world's going through corona stuff right now and everything, but I am not sick, don't worry. I am just wearing it because I'm having a very bad hair day and I was like... Do I want to, like, try to, like, just go shower to take care of this a second time today? Or deal with it? And I decided I'll throw a beanie on. Whatever. It's been a while since I've wore one on, on camera anyway. So, I try not to do it too much. But, um, also the other order of business. Not like it's a big deal anyway. But I also have, uh, coffee. Which is something that, if you've watched my channel for a while, was something I used to drink a lot. Almost every, almost every reaction I'd record, I'd get a cup of coffee before I did it. And, uh, I don't know, I was in the mood for it today, so I decided to make some. So you'll be see seeing me sip on that for a bit. But, anyways, regardless of all that, I'm sure you guys don't care too much, but, uh, last episode, and last couple episodes, I guess, since I kind of, uh, watched a few of them together, uh, we had Boruto and the rest of the gang against Kakao. K I don't know if I'm saying that right, if I'm even remembering it right. But, uh, the, the big red-haired, uh, fabrication, I believe, is what they were called. It's been a bit since I watched. Um, and he seems like he died? He, he, like, crumbled, right? Um, or did he... Shoot, did he... I think he died. Uh, I couldn't remember if he crumbled enough for them to put him in one of those tanks... To try to save him, or if he's just dead dead, but I think he's dead dead. We'll probably get corrected in this episode, or one of the other ones, but... Uh, we also have, uh, Lord Ku, who took over the Stone Village, and is not... Not going over the head of Onoki yet, to kill the villagers to get the hearts that they need, but he seems like he's considering it if Onoki says no, so... That's going to be something interesting that is going to be, you know, coming up here soon. Um, and then we had Chikadai being awesome, sneaking into the Hokage's office, making a phone call to Shikamaru and, and all that, which was probably one of my favorite things of this, like, entire arc is just is Shikadai in that moment. I love the smart, strategic characters. And uh, so... You know, the more we see that, the more I'm going to continue to love Shikamaru, and then Shikadai, you know, might end up being my favorite. Even though I do, I, I do always say that I really like uh, Serata as well, just because I love raw strength. And whenever she punches someone really hard and says, SHA! I love it. But anyways, guys, let's jump into this episode. That's enough recap for now, so let's do it, guys. Alrighty, like usual, uh... Because, as usual now, we have timer-based system. Get your footage ready. We are going to be starting the episode. You guys can sync to my timer. And we are going to start in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, now. TV Tokyo. Oh, also, don't forget, I think there might be a little bit time left in the poll. So make sure you guys go vote in that. There's two polls up. I'll try to remember to put the link in the description. Hopefully it's still going at this point. I think it should be. Or there might even only be like a couple days left. Hmm. Oh, that's right. Because, uh... Ki Kikara? Is that her name? The girl's name? Came in at the end of their fight and took them. Yeah. He's just riding one of the Akutas. <laughs> mm. Oh. Yeah. So Onaki is seeing for the first time that Lord Ku took the city, I think. Yeah. Opening time! Also, um, I've been told by one of you awesome viewers that there is a uh, ending. Death Gun let me know that there's an ending, a new ending, after this uh, episode, but there's no spoilers, so I get to watch it. So, 
I'm glad we still have this opening, though. I'm gonna cherish this opening until the very end. Do 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 do. Oh, it's actually been so like. It's funny because I drink Duncan's coffee a lot. <laughs> Honestly, like I even have my one from today, Duncan's iced coffee. Um, I haven't thrown it out yet, but uh, that's usually what I drink every day. I'm I'm spoiled in that regard. Um rather than making my own. And so this is kind of like my second coffee today, but sometimes after a while of not having the coffee I make at home, I really miss it. Gotta love my topics I get on that have nothing to do with Boruto, but we're watching the opening, so who cares? It's an awesome opening. No, 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 no. Oh, I love that shot of Serata's like glowing eyes. It's so cool. I love how it almost looks like super high quality, almost like it could be a little bit of CG, but I'm not sure. I don't know, I just love that opening so much. Kirara. Kirara? Something like that. Okay, I thought I was wrong. There wasn't a second K in there. Oh, how our leaders have returned. Oh, bow down, yes, yes. <laughs> Some of them just look so sad. Hmm. Is he going to be fine with it after seeing all this? Now that he knows... Yeah. Yeah, so this isn't how Onaki planned it. I was wondering about that. Hmm. Yeah, people are in their homes, scared. Mm. Alright, here it is. Is he gonna say it? Yup. Alright. That's what he's saying. How is Onaki gonna respond? Well, duh, they're dead, Chocho. Come on now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're, they're kids. Alright, he's saying no for now. Yeah. The only thing I gotta say is he attacked and maybe even killed some shinobi from the Hidden Leaf in this whole process, and Onaki was okay with that. So is it okay if it's Leaf Shinobi that die, but he doesn't want any of the Hidden Stone to die? In, like, a world of peace, that's not really nice. I mean, maybe none of the Hidden Leaf died. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it's a little bit hypocritical. Um... Uh oh, now is the betrayal about to happen? Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh! Yup. And now the creation becomes the master. Oh, jeez. That poor dude's had it rough.
You know too much. Oh no. Jeez. I love how snarky Serata is, even in the face of this. <laughs> That's why we have to steal one! <laughs> Just kidding. If we don't have a heart, we must steal one. Die. No. <gasps> Konohamaru, please! Yes, please. <gasps> oh, okay. Oh, I should I? Oh, uh, so it wasn't gonna hover. Where's gonna hover? When is he gonna show up? I'm glad to see Shake I anyway. Where was Konohamaru last? He was heading towards the village, right? Oh boy. Round two, fight! They're very confident for people that needed to run away last time they fought them. And they're even gonna split up again. Hmm. Interesting confidence that they have all of a sudden, but why? Did they get their buds beat last time? Not like they've been training. Oh no, Akon, are you okay? Oh, this is Akon's memory. <gasps> Yeah, she took control of him. I don't even remember the result of, of him being controlled. I guess, did they just take care of it? Uh, this girl again. You used a shortcut. That's such a funny thing to say. Okay, good. I'm glad they catch on, at least. Hopefully... I'm guessing Serata probably won't fall for a Genjutsu. But I wonder if Boruto's gonna... They are very human-like. We've talked about this already. <gasps> She's gone! She was like... Reminds me of, like, a Mary Poppins sort of thing. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, jeez. And they cut away! No, what happened? <laughs> did, did he just miss those? Or did, did he manage to dodge them? Or was that, like, the plan? Oh. Oh, jeez. What the heck? What? Why is there a big cavern? Why did it collapse in like that so much? Uh, I guess they have pipes running through? Is that why? Maybe they're like sewage system or something? Oh, jeez. Oh. Chocho has close combat, but unfortunately that happens to her a lot. Oh no, right into Inojin. <gasps> Is Akun gonna be the savior? Maybe he's the almighty. The true strong fabrication. I don't know why they thought they could win when they couldn't win last time. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. 
All right, so he was acknowledging their strength in the last fight. I mean, they did good in the last fight, but they still, like, ended up having to run, right? Kona Hamaru! Oh. Is he sacrificing himself so they can get away? Yeah. No, don't cut away! They're cutting away at all the good stuff. Alright, so these are the ones that they want to take the hearts of. Mitsuki's still here. This friggin' mad scientist dude. Man, I kind of forgot about Mitsuki out of all this. Like, I didn't forget about him, but, like, I wonder what his motivations are in all this, because I still don't think he's just, like, pure evil with these guys, right? Like, I think he has a plan in his mind. I think he's going to stop something before it starts. But I wonder, like, what he's waiting for at this point. What more does he want to learn, essentially? Hmm. Just seeing some of the shinobi and innocent people. Yeah. Yeah, they're almost all shinobi there, except for the ones that I guess is what they're considering hostages, so they can't move. Damn. Uh, Kokuyo. I have a feeling Inojin and Shocho are going to have some kind of trap laid out. And Kokuyo's not going to expect his friends to come back, maybe? Oh, no shadows. Oh, yep, they had some kind of plan. Nice. Oh, that was cool. Well done, guys. Alright, so they, they knew they couldn't win, and they planned this beforehand. Good, good. That makes more sense. I take back everything I said about them before. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, team. Shoot, I can't remember what their team number is. Oh man, he's just trying to. Oh. Yeah, hit him good because he's about to break free. Oh, his face is cracked, I think, wasn't it? Sure, Chocho. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, crap. Oof. Ah, God. He's getting closer. Yep, his face is cracked. Oh, jeez. He doesn't seem like he has much more in him. Oh, are they backing off again? Oh, uh, Konohamaru? Ah, yeah, there he is. Oh, Mitsuki. Ooh. Oh, I want more of this. Don't cut away, damn it! They're always cutting away on me. I wanted more of everything. They just... Smoke bombed out of there and just talking somewhere. Let's 
Sink or swim. All right. Nice. Some distraction stuff. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> damn, nice. Okay, so now what, though? But wait. Oh, okay, he released it. Right? No? Don't okay. I'm confused about that. Aren't you supposed to take damage if he if he stayed in that mind transfer? Isn't he gonna take damage for Chocho's attack too? Or was he planning on cutting it off early, but it just got got cut off even more early? Hmm. He's trying to use it again. Are they gonna do something else? <gasps> oh, Akan! Don't stay there shocked, use the, use the advantage. Yeah, Cho-Cho, go! Oh no! No, Akon! Okay. Okay, good, he got hit. Akon, you better be okay! <laughs> yep. Oh, I love you, Shake a Die. Oh, our friendship. Hmm. Damn. <laughs> Got him. I was actually gonna say something about that. That if the mind transfer juice who worked on these fabrications, they must be pretty close to humans, you know? And I should, like, somewhat prove it, you know? <gasps> no, I can Oh. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Aww. I hate this show. We're at worst episode of Boruto yet. Nope. No. I don't want it. You know, Gene. Oh, buddy. The best part of this arc is now gone. <laughs> what what are we still watching for? I'm just kidding. It's still a very good episode. That just sucks. I love that gun. Oh, they're both Genjutsu'd, huh? Even Serata. Damn. I ex I expected Serata to be able to, like, fight it. Between Sharingan and she's just usually very good with avoiding stuff like that. Oh! 
Whoa, we're already at the ending. Crap. And this is the new ending. Ooh. Whoa. Kind of cool. Huh. Interesting artwork. It's like... Just black and white, but the the background even seems like less detail, but there still looks like the same amount of detail in the characters. Interesting. They have such interesting design choices for their openings and endings, honestly. At least as of recently. Whoa. Huh. Oh. All right, so we have color back with just showing all the characters and stuff. All right. Interesting. I don't really know how to interpret it, but... Okay, that seemed a little... We've never seen him actually tie his headband on, have we? I thought it was always just, like, a solid loop that he just, like, put on his head. But in this shot, we actually see the tie in the back. I don't know if we've ever seen that before. Huh. That one shot where we saw, like, the tie part sticking out. Okay, well, that's the end of the episode. Bam. Episode 88 done! That was good stuff. But yeah, during that outro, we saw one shot where we saw the headband tied behind his head. And you could actually see, like, the ties, like, popping out behind his head. And I feel like we never see that. I feel like it's always just, like, a headband. You know, not not something that he ties on. I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, maybe for animation, budget-wise, they just don't show the knot in the back all the time. You know? I have no idea. But, anyways, that was a really good episode, but I'm really sad Akan is dead, unfortunately. But he he came in like a hero and, and saved them, essentially, right? Like... Maybe they could have figured something else out, but, you know, it, it would have been rough regardless of, regardless of what they figured out, but, man. Uh, okay, so, I guess looking at this episode from the beginning, man, a lot happened, and it was really good, and we even still just, like, we still have so much to cover still, like... I'm I'm liking it. It's getting into like the the meat of the arc that I've been waiting for, you know. Um But in the beginning we had Oniki discovering that Lord Ku had taken over the hidden stone, which wasn't a part of the plan. Um seemingly by Onoki's reaction, they they weren't supposed to do that. So that's very interesting. Um I mean, I kind of, I've been weighing that ever since that happened. I was like, is this part of Oniki's plan or is it not? Because we know that Oniki's morals have been somewhat questionable since the beginning, right? Like, he doesn't always, he doesn't always see on the right side of morality, in my opinion. Like, like I mentioned during this episode, he talks about how he refuses to... Uh, sacrifice Shinobi to give his dudes hearts, but he talks about, or but he sent them to get Mitsuki and when they mentioned that Hidden Leaf Shinobi were hurt, and I'm pretty sure they said killed. I'm pretty sure they used the words killed. Um, Onoki was like, well, that's just part of the mission, you know? So it's like I don't know, I guess maybe because that's in, like, a combat sense, whereas this is just straight up killing people, you know? Um, maybe he sees it differently as, like, a self-defense sort of thing, you know? I don't know. But I feel like that's a little bit hypocritical, as long as I'm remembering those parts right, you know? But that's that's one of the big things that, that I took away from this, was how unclear it is about Oniki's motives and how far he will go. And I think this episode answered some of those questions because, you know, he obviously didn't want the Hidden Stone to be taken over. He doesn't want them to use the hearts. And because of that, kind of like what I thought would happen, Lord Ku decided to take over. And I'm actually surprised Lord Ku gave Onoki this much leeway and this much time to make the decision, you know? Uh, but 
I guess it shows that Lord Ku wanted to try to stay on the good path, so, you know, maybe that's a little bit of, like, redemption kind of thoughts for him, but we'll, uh, we'll see where, where it goes from here, but, uh, but yeah, they, they ended up knocking him out, taking control, we saw a little bit of the, the stone shinobis who were stuck because they had hostages with akutas everywhere and all that, so, so they weren't able to do anything unless, uh, you know, someone gets there and helps, like, protect the hostages while they take out the Akutas. There's so many shinobi, it looks like, there. I'm surprised they each couldn't take one Akuta and, you know, deal with the situation. But I guess you could consider the whole town as hostages, maybe, because they have Akuta roaming everywhere, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's that's interesting. Uh, I guess briefly we can mention that we had uh, Konohamaru and... Not Konohamaru. Yeah, Konohamaru. Yeah, duh, what am I thinking? Uh, and Mitsuki meet. So I wonder what they're going to talk about. Like, obviously, it doesn't seem like... Uh, it doesn't seem like Mitsuki was hostile in any way. So I wonder if we're going to finally learn maybe what Mitsuki's up to, if he explains, you know, what he knows to Konohamaru, and maybe we start seeing, because, you know, I'm still firmly in the belief that uh, Mitsuki has a good reason for doing this, he's not just, you know, evil now, and he doesn't just want to, like, help these people kill people, you know, help these fabrications kill people and take over, you know. I firmly believe that he is going to be... Uh, he's going to have some plan in mind and we might get some, like, you know, explanation of where he was trying to protect people or, you know, infiltrate or something. I don't know. Um, but I I'm guessing when we have that conversation, because he is now confronted with Konohamaru, I, I just wonder if he's going to spill his guts or if Konohamaru is going to try to convince him to leave and Mitsuki's just still going to be resistant and we're not going to learn anything. I don't know, it seems kind of pointless for Mitsuki to show up there, because it seems like Mitsuki saw Konohamaru before Konohamaru saw him, so Mitsuki could have easily ran, you know, so I feel like we're going to get some information, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, but yeah, and then we had the, uh, basically, majority of the rest of the episode was the fight between Kokyo, but there was also the little bit of, uh, the little bit of Serata and Boruto with Kira, which I'll talk about, because there obviously wasn't much of there. Their fight kind of is, like, just beginning as long as they can break out of the Genjutsu, but, um, essentially, she showed up and, I guess, did her little, uh, umbrella trick where she poofed behind them and then, uh, managed to get her Genjutsu off, so I don't know... I'm kind of surprised they both got under the Genjutsu. I wonder if they can brute force their way out of it, or or what they're going to do to to get out of it, unless someone's going to have to go save them. But I don't know who would save them, because, you know, Shikadai and them were dealing with their own problem and everything, and then Konohamaru is dealing with his stuff with Mitsuki. So I don't think there's really anybody else to save them. So my guess is is that... Serata and Boruto just have to force of will break out of this, so, but that's really all the development we had, right? Like, they ran into him, and I think they cut away, like, they ran into her, and then they cut away, and then they came back, and she popped out her umbrella and snuck up behind him, and then I think it cut away again, and then we saw them briefly being controlled towards the very end as a third time, so... Really, I don't think there's much more to talk about with that other than they're just going to break out, you know, but... Um, I loved the fight between... Um, I can't remember their team number, but the Ino Chico show formation kind of thing that they have. Um, Ino Shika Cho, I think that's what it is. Um, sorry, I think I said it wrong the first time, but anyways... Uh, I really love their teamwork that they always have. I love the combinations of what they can do. I've always loved that, you know, how they're not the strongest team, you know, they don't have brute strength, but they're good at, like, 
you know, CCing, like crowd controlling from MMORPGs where you just keep, you know, one or two people locked down so they can't do anything while the other people go in and fight, you know? And I, I really love, like, the different strategies they use and how I was completely doubting them. They went in with, like, extreme confidence. And I'm like, why are they so confident? I don't get it. You know, I was so against their logic at the start of the fight because they just seemed so full of themselves. I was like, I don't understand why they are so confident right now. And uh, and it, it turns out that they, that they had a plan... The whole time to just act like they can win, and then when they they fake realize essentially that it's too much for them, and Shikadai sacrifices himself only to lead um lead Kokuyo into the hallway with the lights and fake him out with the jutsu, let him break all the lamps. Granted, uh, they. Uh, <laughs> Like, Shikadai is a genius. It's insane how he... How he realized that, like, okay, he knows my jutsu, so how can we work around this? I need light. There's light in, you know, the those tunnels. Because did they even know that, like, the light was going to be in the tunnels? Did they even know they were going to get knocked down into those tunnels beforehand? Like, did he even plan getting knocked down into those tunnels? Or... But he also mentioned during this episode that they have to compensate and trust their friendship. So was it something where he just trusted his friends to do this, or was this a plan they had the whole time? Now I'm not sure. Hmm. I feel like they would have had to compensate, because, I mean, unless they somehow knew that there was tunnels underground, somehow knew that they'd get knocked into the tunnels if he tried to do his, uh, you know, shadow possession and failed, and... Uh, and all that, but, hmm. But either way, it was really cool how Enogen covered up the light, because the guy broke all the ones that he could see, but he obviously didn't see the one that was covered at the very end, and that allowed, uh, Shikadai to get his shadow possession off, which allowed Chocho to get a big hit. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough, but it did, it did hurt him quite a bit, but... And then, uh... You know, I even like their second plan. Unfortunately, Kokuyo is just so strong he broke out of it, and the fact that uh, Inojin isn't very well versed in his uh, mind transfer. We know that uh, we know that he's kind of avoided that kind of thing because we even saw him like learn it and practice it just a little bit. And I'm sure maybe he's practiced it a little bit since, but. He's definitely leaning more towards size jutsus, you know, with, like, the, the paintings and everything. So, uh, it, it might also be the fact that Inojin isn't well-versed in it, and the fact that Kokuyo is just strong and broke out of it, you know. Um, and that was one thing. I'm not sure what they were planning there. I don't know if he was planning on releasing it, like, the very last second, but he broke out too soon. You know, because he he seemed like he was angry when he got broke out of it. But if he stayed in it, if he was in that mind transfer when Kokuyo got hit, doesn't the body get hit too? Wasn't that something we saw happen in uh, in the first episode of uh, or not the first episode, but the first uh, the first series in the Naruto series, whenever uh, Ino was doing it, and she would. She would always get hurt whenever people would get hurt while she was in it. She would have to release it and stuff like that. Uh, like, whatever affects the body that she's in affects her normal body as well. Um, but maybe, you know, his his plan might have been, like, you know, right as soon as Chocho's, like, right there. Like, right in my face. I'll release the Jutsu, then he won't have the reaction time to jump away. Because he, like, will be thrown off and won't know what's going on and stuff like that. So that might have been the plan, I'm sure. I'm sure he didn't just, like, forget that, you know, he would take damage, too. Um, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, that that whole exchange, the multiple ways they, they fought, that was pretty cool. It's too bad. I mean, Kokuyo is strong. I kind of, I mean, I did think that someone had to come in to help, and it ended up being Akan to, to save the day. He, uh... Akan came in and covered his eyes and 
bought them enough time to to land a hit, but unfortunately, Akun has perished. Our our perfect little our perfect little Akuta. He was so adorable. Ah, I was actually. I wasn't, like, emotional to, like, tears or whatever, but I was very upset to see that. But, yeah. Oh, man. So, I guess now we're moving into, I think, I mean, we didn't see him crumble, but I think Kokuyo is done for. I mean... He wasn't getting up while they were sitting there and talking to him, but they were still talking to him, so I don't know. But So I guess all that's left is Kira and Ku and uh, Sekie. So there's three left. Yeah, there's not another one, right? Yeah, no, I don't think there is. So uh, We have Konohamaru talking to Mitsuki, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I'm really looking forward to seeing where this arc goes, though. I've been really enjoying this arc. Um, I mentioned it in some of my comments and stuff, talking to people that have commented on these videos. Um, I know that a lot of people don't like this arc, but I really like the story that they're telling, right? Like, but I do feel like it's a little bit dragged out. Like, I felt like they didn't need that Heart of Stone, that that whole zone, or the, I mean, not the Heart of Stone, the Heart Stone, that whole little, like, section, I feel like didn't really need to be there. But I understand that they're, you know, this is a show that doesn't end. It just keeps airing every week. And they need to be able to, you know, buy enough time for the, the manga to be written enough to, to keep going without having to stop. So I understand they need to throw some things in there. I just think that, like, that's one thing I like about My Hero Academia is that they could very easily do a long format like this where they just keep going and they never stop and not do like the separate seasons like they do. But we would have a lot more episodes that, you know, one would consider filler rather than, you know, what they do where they just take a year break or whatever for the manga to be written further ahead or whatever and, uh, and come out with, you know, one really good season and, and stuff like that, but... Either way, I mean, it's not a big deal. I, when I'm watching week to week, it, which, I mean, technically you guys do if you're caught up as well, it does kind of stink when you have, like, a, you know, a fillery episode because then you're like, oh, you know, now i got to wait a whole nother week to really continue the story. But for the most part, I get a little upset by it right away, but then I get into my other projects and everything and I completely forget about Boruto after, like, one or two days, and then I go for the next, you know, four or five days without even thinking about it, and it's not a big deal, so, I don't know, it's really, like, sometimes it bugs me more than other days, other days I'm just like, alright, whatever, that was the episode, but, uh, sometimes I do feel really bad for cutting discussion short just because of a slow episode that I'm not really sure what to talk about, but, but yeah, guys, I don't know, um, I'm really looking forward to what comes next, though, we had some good fights this episode, I think we're going to still have some more good fights with uh, Kira and stuff like that. And uh, I'm really, really excited for the conversation between Mitsuki and Konohamaru. That's like, that's my main thing that I want to see right now. So hopefully we see that next episode. But yeah, guys, I think that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Don't forget, if you're enjoying all this content, hit that subscribe button so you get updates from me. And uh, you see all like the new videos popping up and everything. And uh, check out my Patreon, too, if you want early access. If you want to see the next episode right now, you can check that out on there. And uh, there will be more benefits coming. I'll be making a video regarding those benefits within the next, like, week or so. Um, and then it'll be about two weeks until, a little over two weeks until they're actually going to be, like, starting up and stuff like that. But I got some new benefits coming there as well, so keep an eye out for that stuff. And like I said at the beginning of the video, don't forget to vote in the poll if there is time left. I apologize if it is over, but I should have the poll links in the description. Hopefully I don't forget. So, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.